I know I got up this morning with the aid of an alarm clock, but my friends, I'm telling you, I am glad the Lord woke me up this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. So this morning we're going to go down to the river to pray. Um, it's a song that's been done by many artists, including Allison Cross. <clears throat> And I know this ministry is a small one. <laughs> we have me as cameraman, sound engineer, <coughs> maintenance guy on the <coughs> microphone and what have you, and so on. I will be sure to turn on the microphone before the sermon. So, we're going down to the river to pray. If you would, sing along with us if you know the words. If not, you can dig them up online and get the words that way. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Come on, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. <clears throat> when, let's redo that one. Oh, mothers, let's go down, come on down, don't you want to go down? Come on, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. And that verse, oh, mothers, let's go down. 
Come on down, don't you want to go down? Come on, mothers, yes. let's go down. Yes, down in the Lord. river to pray. Yes, Jehovah. Mothers are blessed yes, because Jehovah. they bear the children. Mothers are blessed because a lot of times they're doing the raising of the children. Glory to God. Oh, yes. Jehovah, thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much for that song this morning. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your son, Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, that you sent to us on this cross in this world. Thank you so much for saving sinners like us. That's right. Hallelujah. Now, I mentioned a few times in the sermons that I've given over the year and a half that this ministry has been on YouTube and now we're expanding to a physical presence here at 302 West 3rd Street, Manchester, Georgia, uh, yeah. here in our chapel, the living room. Um, the living room doubles as our chapel, doubles as our daycare during the week, doubles as a gathering place for family, and a gathering place for fellow Christians who want to come here and learn the Word of God. Amen. Come on in. I mentioned the mailbox club. And, yes, I know I got... This is their second set of lessons called My New Life in Christ. Uh, this is a good way to increase your knowledge of the Bible. Amen. And it is available online um, for, all ages. for all ages. And they're based out of Valdosta, Georgia. Um, what is their website? Mailboxclub.org or? Mm. I think I got their envelope in here too. I think it's mailbox.com.org. I can't remember that. Um, I can look it up. Mailboxclub.org. I have their envelope. That's okay. how I know. Okay. Mailboxclub.org. Yes, sir. And they're based out of Valdosta, Georgia, 404 Eager Road, Valdosta, Georgia, 31602. So, if you want to expand your knowledge of the Bible, the Holy Bible, I highly recommend this. It comes every two weeks if you take it and put it back in the mail. Yes, it's an investment of a stamp and an envelope to send your answer sheets back in. But they grade them and they send you a new book. And they send Each and every time. They even send scriptures too. Most recently they sent us Luke chapter 6 verses 32. Uh, 27 to 36. 36. But I even went further Farther and went down to verse 38. Um, Lisa, I think we need a fan because it is getting a bit warm in here. And I know we're having to use lights to light the camera and while Lisa gets the fan oh, excuse me. to benefit us if it's easier to bring the pedestal fan and plug it in that's 
okay. It may be lighter in weight for you. But anyway, as oh, thank you. I think we be beneficial. Ministry, we wear a lot of hats around here. To be honest, we've been doing a lot of cleaning. And we've done a lot of cleaning yesterday, as a matter of fact. We moved our studio and office back into the laundry room here at the house, uh, our world headquarters of JBM. We're working on getting stuff we need. Mm -hmm. But, you know, since it's just the two of us. Yes. My wife and I have agreed on the beliefs, and we actually printed this from World Evangelism Fellowship through Jimmy Swaggart Ministries. That's right. And these are our beliefs. The Bible is the inspired and only, and this may be a sermon today, what we believe. As a matter of fact, it is our sermon for the day. So allow me a moment to activate our sound system. Because we're going to make it our sermon for today. Amen. And as you know, what we believe has an impact on how we operate in the Spirit and in truth. So, I'm going to read the beliefs and we'll break it down by Scripture. Here's what we believe. The Bible is the inspired and only infallible and authoritative written Word of God. And of course they cite, they being World Evangelism Fellowship, cite Psalms 119, Matthew 4 and 4, and Luke 24, 27. Number two, there is one God eternally coexistent in three persons. God the Father, whose name in Exodus 6.3 is Jehovah. Mm -hmm. God the Son, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Which Jesus referred to as the Spirit of Truth. Mm -hmm. That scripture is 1 John 5 and 7. Mm Principle number three, the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ in His virgin birth, in His sinless life, in His miracles, in His victorious and atoning death, in His bodily resurrection, in His ascension to the right hand of the Father, in His personal future return to earth in power and glory to rule a thousand years. John 1 and 1 to 4. Ephesians 2, 13 to 18, Revelation chapters 19 and 20. In the blessed hope, the rapture of the church of Christ's coming, or at the time of Christ's coming. Mm -hmm. 
Number five, the only means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance and faith in the precious blood of Christ. Romans 5, 1, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, 13 and 18, or 13 to 18. Regeneration by the Holy Spirit is absolutely essential for personal salvation. John 3, 5 through 8, and Titus chapter 3, verse 5. The redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing of the human body in answer to believing prayer. Exodus 15, 25 to 26, James 5, 14 to 15, and 1 Peter 2, 24. But baptism with the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers who ask for it. Acts 2 and 4, 10, 44 to 46, 19, 1 through 7. In the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy life. Romans chapter three, chapter 6, verse 3 through 14, 8, 1 and 2, and 11. In the resurrection of both the saved and the lost, the one to everlasting life and the other to everlasting damnation. Revelation 25 to 6 and verses 11 to 15. This is what we believe. Amen. Amen. This is what we believe. Heavenly Father, Jehovah, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the sermon that's about to be given here. Father, we just thank you right now that you are with us in the delivering of your word. Yes, Jehovah. Jehovah, we thank you for everything that you've done so far, not just in my life, but my wife's life. Thank you so much. We thank you for delivering her from pain and suffering and for helping her through all the things that she's been through. And Father, we just thank you for those watching and listening that they have their eyes open and their ears open and they can hear and be healed and delivered unto you. Heavenly Father, Jehovah, it's in your Son, Jesus Christ, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. And already the battery is showing a red light. So, that being said, I know the microphone up top of the camera can pick up. It's done it before, and I believe it'll do it again. Have faith. And this is why we ask for help financially, physically, because, you know, I can't be everywhere behind the camera, in front of the camera, and so on. That's why I've asked for help, not just on our blog, jamesbarkersministries.wordpress.com. I've asked for help in sermons in the past. So if you are prayerful, if you are spiritually minded, come to 302 West 3rd Street, Manchester, Georgia, Sundays 11 a.m. when our service begins. Anybody that wants to help, like run camera, or come and sing, early. sing, be in the Word of God early. We can pray. Have breakfast early. Breakfast on Sunday mornings. We have breakfast on Sunday mornings. Come.
And enjoy with his fellowship. Enjoy the fellowship here. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Let's calm it. But in Luke chapter 24, verse 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. But I'm going to go back to verse 25. And he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into His glory? Jesus gave His Word. This is what I have to go through to establish the church. Amen. To establish my church, as Jesus Christ would say. Man. He had to go through that scourge because it was written mm -hmm. way back in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. He had to go through the suffering, the mm -hmm. persecution by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Jesus Christ had to go through that mm -hmm. as it was written before of Him. Even the high priest, Caiaphas, he had foretold that it was expedient for one man to die for a nation. Caiaphas, the high priest that year, mentioned it was expedient for Jesus Christ to die. Unknowingly, Caiaphas played right into the path Jehovah and Jesus and the Holy Spirit established for the church. Mm -hmm. And here he sat as a judge. It's not written whether he repented or not. It's not clear whether Caiaphas exited the way of thinking the Pharisees had. But Jesus Christ came and He suffered but Jesus tarried 40 days after His resurrection to teach His disciples not all of it was written. Certain things were. But considering Jesus invested a number of years of His life, specifically the last three years of His life to the ministry that His Father had for Him, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh into the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening. And the day is far spent, and he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it them, to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to 
to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, while he opened to us the scriptures? And then rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Amen. It's said in Ephesians of the faith. You know, I mentioned Ephesians quite a few times where the Apostle Paul, who used to be Saul, wrote, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. This is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through mm -hmm. 7. Mm -hmm. I'm going to repeat verse 4. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Mm -hmm. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Mm -hmm. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Verse 11. This is adding to what we believe. Verse 11. And He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers Amen. for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Pastors, evangelists, apostles, and prophets. And teachers. You weren't called into this ministry by man. If that's who called you into the ministry and that's who brought you up in this, sit down. The Holy Spirit, today. Jehovah the Father in Heaven, His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and risen Amen. Savior, and the Holy Spirit, the three of them, Amen. acting in one accord, called to ministry. Amen. Call me to teach. Spirit called my wife to teach. Worship and sing. And worship and sing. Called me to preach and to worship and to sing and to set right that which has been set wrong. This is what I believe. This is what I believe. 
this Holy Bible from Genesis to Revelation is what I believe. It's what we believe and it is what you should believe. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you pastors Come on, and bro. bishops Come and on, apostles Come that on. operate in the flesh instead of the yes. Holy Spirit sit yourselves down and yield to the Holy Ghost. Yield to Jehovah, the Creator of this universe, the Father of this earth, the Father of this ministry. And sit down and yield to our Lord and Savior, Not Jesus man. Christ. Not to man. That is where your allegiance should lie. Amen. That's who you should listen to. Amen. Not to the man that called you in the ministry. Amen. Not to the fraternity. That had fun with you through college. Your allegiance spiritually, physically, and in the ministry should be from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. This is what this is your roadmap. This is what you're supposed to believe. Not man. This is your roadmap, pastors, Amen. apostles, prophets, teachers, Amen. preachers. Glory to God. Evangelists. Yes. Yes. That's where it should be. Amen. Sometimes I wonder in the modern church where the sickness is whether it's in the pews or in the pulpit. Because if the sickness is in the pulpit, then the sacred stand needs to be re-sanctified through much earnest prayer and sanctification. I was hungry this morning, not necessarily for food, even though I had a little bit of it. I was hungry for the Word, I was hungry for the word of Jehovah That's what I wanted to and His Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. That's what I wanted to hear and that's what I wanted to preach on. I feel so good when I get to hear. There's, I know there's pastors in this world that, yes, they spend day after day after day preparing a sermon through study, through prayer. And they do good. But I also know there are pastors who micromanage. I saw it myself. I'll be honest with you. Just a moment. Sorry, I had to make an adjustment there, but I'll be honest with you. I've seen my share of pastors that talk the talk but don't walk the walk. Talk. I've seen deacons that talk the talk, but in their hearts they push another agenda. If you 
going to do something, do it right. If you're going to do something, do it right and do it according to this. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through you all, or through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Preachers are supposed to sanctify their selves before Jehovah to receive Him within them to minimize their own pride, their own gratitude, their own self-congratulating attitudes, all of it is vanity and vexation of the Spirit as is said in Proverbs. A bit of paraphrase there, but There are pastors, and I'm going to start with Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, and I'll go until the Lord tells me I've made my point, or I've made His point, rather. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth, with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Pastors, if the Word of God 
has not been delivered passionately like I've been delivering it with the fire of the Holy Spirit that is within you, pastors, you should take some time, lock yourself in a prayer room, in your study, get in the Word. Get back in the Word. Get back in this Word. This is my roadmap. This is my songbook. This is my Proverbs. This is my revelation Amen. that Jesus Christ gave me. When His hands were stretched out on that cross, <clears throat> if you're not preaching the Word of God the way Jehovah has meant for you to preach it, Get in that prayer closet. Get in that study privately until that fire is built up within you. Otherwise, just step down from the pulpit and sit down because that's where Jehovah, His Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit will put you. If you don't preach, his word. His spirit. His truth is in this book. All you have to do is read it. Amen. Minister it. Otherwise, what are you doing at the pulpit? This is what we believe. That Jesus Christ came from heaven into the Virgin Mary to be birthed as a little baby that not only was the Word with Jesus, the Word is Jesus Christ. His Father Jehovah. Jesus Christ crucified, dead, buried, resurrected on that third day, tearing with His disciples 40 days. And then His ascension to be at the right hand of Jehovah. And then the Spirit of Truth coming from heaven to the believers in the day of Pentecost that's coming soon to be celebrated and commemorated. And that the Holy Spirit gives to the believer that wishes to speak other tongues That's the word I was instructed to give today. Amen. Amen. Pastors pay heed. Preachers pay heed. Even I have to pay heed to the very word I preach. And I have to too. If you're called to ministry, be ready. To give of your life, your heart, and your soul. Your soul goes to Jesus Christ. Because He saved all your soul, not part of it. And man does not call others into ministry. Jesus Christ sees to serve in the church whom He will have to serve. Amen. Because He's with His Father. He is the great intercessor.
Heavenly Father, I thank You for the Word and the mission that You have me on this earth for. To preach the Word and teach the Word and to try to set Your church right. Yes. We thank You. Heavenly Father, we thank You for what You've given us. Yes. And what You will continue to give us. Father, we thank You for Jesus Christ, who is our intercessor. Yes. Father, we thank You for everything that You've done through Him. Yes. The establishment of Your church is the foundation that we have. Father, I pray the Holy Spirit convicts those living in sin, even at the pulpit, even in the front row, even as a deacon. Pray that the ministry of Jesus Christ that you have ordained is returned to the church and that any other topic, politics, the world, is taken out of the sanctuary and put where it should be, outside Let not this sanctuary be a place for legislation, but for consecration, for sanctification, to the study of Your Word, and let us be at peace. For those who are in sin, we pray that they find you going forward in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Having said that about those in sin, if you find yourself living outside of the sanctification of Jesus Christ, Him crucified and shedding His life, giving His life to save you. If you find yourself in that path right now, I want you to travel with me down a road I'm going to begin at Romans chapter 3, verses 20 through 26. Because if I'm going to lead you down Romans Road, I'm going to give you the entire way. Not mile post 23. Not chapter 6, mile post 23. I'm going to give you that whole path. I'm going to go back to verse 19 in the book of Romans, chapter 3. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, 
through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Romans chapter 6, verses 20 through 23. For when ye were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Give Him all the praise. Hallelujah, Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 5. Verses 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth His love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And I would be remiss if I didn't read verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. Romans 10 chapter 10 verse or Romans chapter 10 verses 8 through 18 But what saith The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach. But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on Him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. <coughs> For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. How then 
shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Esaias saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily their sound went into all the earth and their words into the ends of the world. In verse 19, But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Esaias is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. I just went to the end of chapter 10. Praise Jehovah for the reading of the Word. Amen. Have you found yourself called, pulled, however it is? Have you found yourself lacking something in the spirit, in your soul? Have you found yourself wondering, what am I going to do? I can't very well change who I am. Well, you're not the one that has to change you. Jesus Christ can take care of that. If you're living in sin and taking pills and drinking booze to get rid of the pain and the pain's still there, then the booze isn't working. The pills aren't working. Because it's going to be there when you come back. Because the pain's going to be there when you come back. You have to deal with problems or issues. But I know a man who walked this earth, who turned water into wine. I know a man. Who... I know a man that can. That can, and his name is Jesus Christ. I know a man who can change you. Amen. In an instant. Amen. His Lord name God. is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He changed me. Yes, He changed me too. And a week later brought my own brother to Him. Oh, Jesus Christ is a wonderful Savior. Amen. Oh, Jesus Christ is a wonderful friend. Amen. The words of Michael Landon, yes, it was scripted. It was Highway to Heaven. But in the words of Michael Landon, who played Jonathan Smith. I have the best friend in the world. The best friend you'll ever have. Amen. Who do I work for? I work for that best friend. Amen. In heaven, his name is Jehovah. And He is the Father of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Creator of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is His Son who stood by His side through the creation. Before the world was, I am. He said that. In John it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God.
So if you're viewing pornography just to get away from what your consciousness is telling you, and it's still there, then the consciousness is telling you, hey, I'm seeking something better. I know what that better is, and that better is Jesus Christ. That better person, that better being, that better relationship is with Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. If you're trying on your own to find love and you can't find it, why don't you hide yourself in Him so that those who seek you for friendship, for companionship, for love, has to find you through Him. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is how we found each other through Jehovah and His Son Jesus Christ. I gave up my own way when it didn't work. When I gave it to Jesus. I found the woman I knew in my heart and in my soul would be my soulmate. She sits in this chapel today as I preach the word into this camera I believe it. and send it out. I believe it. I believe every word of this Bible from Genesis to Revelation. What well, gets me through today? It gets me through today. It gets me through every day. Amen. Every In the name day of, of Jesus life. Christ. And I believe this word can help you. Amen. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father Jehovah, I am lost. I've tried it my own way and it isn't working. I've tried taking pills or watching porn or drinking booze and still it doesn't work. But Father God, Jehovah, I believe you work. So I'm asking in your Son's name, Jesus Christ, to come into my life, into my spirit and free me from this bondage that I'm in. Guide me and lead me to what you would have me to do. And let your Holy Spirit descend upon me and fill me to overflowing so that those things that I've thought of in the past I don't think of anymore. But only you and your word and the good things you would have me to do and to be and the friends that I would be with who believe as I do now that Jesus Christ you are my Lord and my Savior and that the Holy Spirit will guide me and lead me and teach me. Jehovah, it's in your Son, Jesus Christ, your name that I pray. Amen. Amen, 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 hallelujah. Amen. And I believe it and I receive it. And Heavenly Father, I come to you on behalf of all those who prayed that sinner's prayer with me. Amen. Would you fill them with the Holy Ghost? Amen. That they may beat the addictions that they have of pornography, of booze, of pills, of going their own way, doing their own thing. And let them come to you and have their mission from you and be with you and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And Jehovah, it's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Lord, yeah. Amen. Thank you. Usually, our services, we, would, we are going to, starting next week, attempt to set up a computer that will connect wirelessly that I will duplicate what is in my main desktop computer into the iMac. 
and we will test it. And we will see if we can set that computer up in here to where we can live stream our services starting at 11 a.m. If you'd like to come and see our services 11 a.m. Sunday morning, 8 p.m. Sunday night, in which this being Mother's Day, we're canceling our Sunday night service to celebrate mothers, and Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. But starting not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, we may end up videotaping our Wednesday night Bible study and just put it out there on YouTube because of my work schedule. Um, I'm finishing up training this week. So this week may be the last one that we live stream at 8 o'clock at night. What we may do is live stream it early in the day and put it up on YouTube. Or maybe Lisa can continue onward with the Wednesday night Bible study while I do work. Um, I can honestly say this. Job has blessed me with a job that is bringing money into the house again. I also know that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and I know He'll make a way for me to be able to teach and to preach where there had been no way. There was a way that I could do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and take Sundays and Wednesdays off. I'd do it in a heartbeat. At the present moment, there is no way, but I will ask about it. Since I'm also preaching and teaching this Word, I want you to know Times may change as far as services, and you'll still see all the services on YouTube. Just search James Farkas Ministries Network. That's the name of my channel on YouTube. I pray that this word reaches worldwide. I pray that it reaches more people. And I know that it will eventually reach many, many, many more people. I know over the last year I've had two major infections. I was healed from them. The help of doctors and the help of medication and yes, the help of the Lord God Almighty because I said to Him both times, not by my will but yours, If it be your will to take me, take me. If, it not, if not, leave me on the mission you would have me to do. And that's what he's doing. Once I recovered sufficiently, I started preaching. Yes, even sitting down preaching the Word of God while I was still recovering. And while some days there's been sickness, there's been lost voice, there's been other things, I know Jehovah and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit brought me through for just such a time as this. Brought me through too. And brought my wife through too. That was in the hospital. In January, early part of January of this year, she was in the hospital. She had a blood clot in her lung, or near her lung. She had COVID and pneumonia in both lungs. It's been a road to recovery. I said it was their will, not mine. She told them, your will, not mine. 
to that extent. But it wasn't my time. He and it wasn't plan. my time to go either. My plans are uh, since to go forward with what they have me to do. Bless you. Thank you. My time is to go forward in the Word. That's right. And do what Jehovah and my son Jesus Christ is. Jehovah, is his son Jesus, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Again, we'll be changing times on this for live action after I get my new work schedule. Whenever that will be. If we have to do Wednesday midday or Wednesday morning, I'm fine with it. I think that's what we're going to have to do. What's the hell is telling me? But pray that this schedule stays. And pray that we get more help in the ministry because we need batteries for the audio equipment. We need another one of these for Lisa so she could see to read the Bible better. Pray that we continue to get through to you. Song. Matter of fact, you can send prayer requests and testimony, JBM Prayer at live.com. If you'd like to give, paypal.me forward slash JBM Vineyard. We are now about to be in possession of a PayPal business debit card for the ministry, strictly for the yes. ministry. That should be coming this week or next week. Yes. Pray that we continue in His service through this medium, maybe even live on Sundays. We may even change it to Monday night Bible study instead of Wednesday night Bible study and have the perfect substitute for Monday night football. Study the Word instead of watching quarterbacks try Amen. to slobber knocker each other through the football field. Christ and the Holy Spirit will show us the path somehow. But just which way we should go. But if you're praying, pray. If you contribute, yes, I do have a tax number. I am working on things, getting it fully up, running, and what have you in the ministry. One of the things that I started and couldn't finish because I didn't know how. Pray that there are people who will come in and help. I'm still praying too. And, and Jehovah's Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit is still with me on this. And they're still saying we need to get a Sunday school class with the children back mm -hmm. in Sunday school. And also praying for a women's Bible study. That's right. Uh, of the ten extraordinary women that I was uh, mentioned a few weeks ago on oh, yeah. Wednesday night, uh, I, I'm looking forward to us having a women's uh, Bible study. Women's maybe have a like Bible mm -hmm. study, you know, like a luncheon or a, or a little snack. And, and, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, the voice you're hearing behind the camera is my wife, Lisa. And she's been by my side. Thick, thin, especially the thin. <laughs> almost anemic. Uh, almost anorexic. You've been by my side too. And we've both been by each other's side through a lot of things. But if you feel led in the ministry, we're located at 302 West 3rd Street, Manchester, Georgia, 31816. You can also send tithes, offerings, and what have you. Check or money order to James Barkus Ministries, P.O. Box 762, Manchester, Georgia, 31816. I'm going to put a screen up on there. Also, if you are in possession of a box of Bibles just collecting dust somewhere, 
whether it's the Gideons, whether it's Bibles you bought or were given by a, uh, another ministry or by a church or even a church closure, please, by all means, let us know. Get it to us so that we can get it out. And if you'd like to give some money for postage, do that as well. PayPal.me forward slash JVM Vineyard. Check or money order. James Barkus Ministries, P.O. Box 762, Manchester, Georgia 31816, or 302 West 3rd Street, Manchester, Georgia 31816. Address it to James Barkus Ministries. It's called Link to the Word. And we're going to link to the Word by giving it. Those that don't have a Bible, let's make it possible for them to get a Bible. And phone numbers if you want to reach us. To reach my wife, Lisa, 706-402-9879. Myself, 706-977-6477. Again, during training from 10 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. This I week, be glad to. I will be set to do not disturb so that I can finish up training. And yes, I will be on the phones. And yes, uh, you can call you me. You can call Lisa. 706-402-9879 the number will call as well. And I will get the message to Brother Barkus. And she'll get it to me. And we will go from there. Mm -hmm. On behalf of all of us at James Barkus Ministries, we thank you for taking a walk through the vineyard and we yes. hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. God keep you. And happy Mother's Day. To happy you. Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. So long, everyone. If you would like to learn more about our ministry, the Vineyard Broadcast, or the other ministry programs of James Barkus Ministries, visit us at jamesbarkusministries.wordpress.com. Visit us today. We're also back on Facebook.